All right, new update time. I know it's been a very long time, over two weeks since the last update. Now, to be fair to me, I've had two weeks worth of content, right? Like, I had a video ready last week, and it was going to go up, but it didn't feel like it was enough to me because, well, you're going to see why later on. But anyways, with that being said... I'm sure you guys probably thought I blew myself up considering that my last video was literally me storing and compressing a very flammable and volatile gas in a modified propane tank. So it probably wasn't the best look that I just seemingly disappeared. Fortunately, I didn't blow myself up quite yet, but I have been really, really busy on some really, really big changes. And I sure hope that these big changes will be worth the wait. Now, I'd like to thank you all so much for the 1,000 views that we have attained on the first ever video I made, which is kind of more just an explanatory video of the microwave pyrolysis reactor. It reached 1,000 views, and I am happy that it is still growing to this day. So thank you very much. Now, what have I been doing? Well, first of all, I wanted to design a system where we could have the magnetron on the side of the reactor. Now, this is predominantly because, not only for now, but for future applications, it makes a lot more sense to have the magnetron on the side rather than from the top. This is because, you, with the magnetron on top, it kind of gets in the way of things like, you know, a hopper system. And also, with it on top, when the lid is removable, which it is, you know, it's annoying to have to unplug those cables all the time. It gets in the way. And on top of all of that, it's... The, the microwaves, they shoot down, and they only penetrate so far down, especially when you have a large batch of plastics. So, you know, you see I'm grinding out these plates in this very nice fashion. Look at them beautiful plates ground out, and I'm, I'm welding them together to make a new waveguide. Now, I will say, in this process, my nuts caught on fire, all right? Now, I know you're like, oh, that's not your nuts. That's a, it's close enough, right? Heat radiates, my nuts caught on fire, right? Everything always has to catch on fire for me, right? So, I weld these together, make a waveguide, typical snazzy stuff. We've seen all this before for me, right? But, you know, regardless, it's what we do around here. And uh, I also had to mount these flanges on the waveguide system, which, you know, are pretty much what they are. You know, they're flanges, just kind of a little box that goes outside of the box. Or is it really a box? Or is it more of like a, a guard almost? I guess, whatever you want to call it. I did that because this was not just one waveguide I was designing. This is two waveguides. That's right, you heard me. Two. And that's because... One waveguide needs to be permanently welded to the reactor, while another one can slide in to be removable. And that's going to be the one where the magnetron itself will, will um, sit on the one that's removable. Um, and why does one have to be permanently welded in the reactor? Because it needs to be airtight. And you see the um, the flange between the two. I can put silicone and a mica sheet in that flange, and that'll make that connection airtight. But it will allow microwaves to pass through. So that's the idea. So I got all that welded. It's done. Now I have to cut these holes in the, the reactor itself. I was really sad to cut these holes because I've never modified the body of it. And, you know, once you cut these holes, it's never going to be the same, man. So I was just like, man, I hope this works. But, you know, here's how it looks. It turned out really good looking, in my opinion. And it, it functions really well in terms of being airtight. I, I didn't have leaks on my welds. Well, I did have a couple, but I touched them up with another couple passes. And it ended up being good. Um, and you see, there was a hole on the inside. And the hole on the inside, I um tried to fill in with some, some mica sheets, but it didn't end up working. So once I mount the whole system on there and the magnetron, this is how it looks. I think it still looks really good. And um, I like the look of it on the side. I really do. Uh, for that previous magnetron hole, I just covered it with some silicone and mica sheet for now. I'll eventually go back and weld it over. But you see, I tried the mica sheets on the side. They didn't work. Now, this is a, a video of me loading the reactor with previously ran through plastic, okay? So these plastics have a high carbon content, which means that a lot of them are going to absorb microwaves. Now my theory was that, okay, this high carbon content plastics are going to go in there and they're all going to degrade because the magnetron is going to heat them up from the bottom and the heat's going to radiate up and just trickle up and tear them apart. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. Hey.
I made a couple modifications. First of all, I added a, uh, a pressure release valve here. This goes up to 200 PSI, but I have it set to, I believe, like 100. Um, gotta be safe with that, always. Um, another thing I added, let me go get it actually. As a suggestion of one of you guys, well, the, the pressure release valve was a suggestion of one of you as well, so thank you for that. And I added another suggestion of, from one of you, which is this right here. Now, this is a one-fourth to propane connector. Now, so we can, this is a, you know, typical propane gauge. This will go right up on there. Well, it's kind of spinning right now, but you get the point. So why did we do this? Well, because propane tanks have this right here, okay? This regulator. Now, this regulator is really good for adjusting how much gas comes out. It's actually better than a typical regulator because initially I was going to use this type of regulator here, which is like a ball regulator. But this is more for compressed air than a flammable gas. So that was a really good suggestion from one of you. Thank you. And I just hope you guys know, like, I really am listening to your suggestions. And I take everything you say into consideration. It's just, you know, some things I can't do right now or, you know, I can't afford. But I do listen to everything you say. And I, I, I take it serious because, you know, it's, this is a we thing, really. You know, we are creating this reactor. We are. So I went to take the lid off after it was done running, and yeah, it was it was really bad, man. It was not good to see at all. Um, as you see, it's like it looked like nothing decomposed in there. Um, it it was really it was really sad to see because I it the side magnetron mounts it would make a lot of pyrolysis gas. Like so, if things were decomposing. But it was just all focused on that one side the magnetron was on, rather than the whole thing. So this makes me wonder, what would happen if we had multiple magnetrons on multiple sides, or what? Or like, I, I, I figure we need some way to, we either need to put magnetrons on every side, or we need a way we can turn the material, right? So the material will all reach the side of the magnetron at some point in the reaction. Because you just see, it, it looks just like I, how I put it in. Just kind of like half decomposed plastic. Unacceptable because, you know, even though it did produce a lot of gas and produce some oil, we want that carbon product too. We want all three valuable products. And this product here is actually kind of toxic with the plastics half decomposed because, you know, things like uh, a BPA in them are, they're, are more accessible and water soluble. So we don't want to do 100 that. 100 PSI, boys. I need to turn it off before that uh, the pressure release valve goes off. But we got it. Let's see. All right, so she's at 100 PSI. I have this little valve on here. This is meant to go on propane tanks. It basically tells you how much gas is left in there. Now, if I turn this on, you see, despite it being at 100 PSI, it, this is still saying that this is below the range of a fully compressed propane tank. So... I looked it up, a regular propane tank usually goes up to 145 PSI. Now the issue is, the spring I have in this pressure release valve only goes up to about 100, I think. So if I put this thing up much further, it's gonna bust, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, this is the furthest we ever gone with it. And, some good stuff. Now this thing is straight up dangerous now. At <laughs> this level, it's been dangerous the whole time, but now, you know, fortunately, um, there's no oxygen in there, and that reminds me, a lot of people were saying I should get a flashback arrestor, and I agree, I actually have one for an acetylene torch. The issue is, uh, I have an old one, and they use, like, really specific types of threads and stuff, so in order to buy all of that and a new one that I can guarantee it will work, it would cost over a hundred dollars just for one single part, and the only reason why acetylene and oxy-fuel torches even have flashback arresters is because there's oxygen present and acetylene is explosive even without the presence of oxygen however i've already tested this and seen that there's no oxygen in there and it's not explosive without oxygen being in there so that's why propane tanks don't have flashback arresters now of course it's always smart and wise to have one 
when you're messing with stuff that's like, you know, we don't know that much about sin gas. It's not, you know, as common, so it's smart, you know, you never know. Maybe under super high pressure, it can become uh, combustible even just on its own. But I'm just going to, you know, for now, just use it like I've been using it, which is really more of a carrier gas for the reactor than actually just using this as like some type of flame because I've, you know, been doing a little bit of um, my own studies and it does require a different fuel to air mixture than propane. And one of you did mention that, you know, when I hook this up to the propane burner, it does not burn. It blows itself out. And that's because the, the, the um, size of the propane burner's uh, orifice is way too small for this gas. This gas needs a pretty large orifice to um properly ignite so i don't know if that means it needs more fuel to air or less fuel to air but it just needs like a bigger orifice bigger than what propane has so yeah so now for the big thing the big thing i've done well i found this washing machine motor well i didn't find it i got it from an old washer machine somebody had and i just took it out i took out the motor i took out the pulley system um, and it gave me a really good idea because for a while I always thought about making some type of agitation system in the reactor. I didn't know how to do it because like how in the world do you get some spinning shaft in the reactor while keeping it airtight at the same time? And I never yeah. knew or even thought to look up what bearings are and how they work. But I thought about it. How can a washing machine motor stop water from getting inside the motor when there's water in the washer? And that's because of bearings, right? At least I think so. But anyways, I, I took the pulley, took all that. And I now I had to drill this hole at the bottom of this reactor in order to fit the, the system in there. Because that's where it's going to be. It's, it's going to be mounted at the bottom. So you get to see a nice good old drill montage here. Typical stuff, um, you know, drilling the metal is always a pain, but I I think I've mastered it. You, you I noticed the, the key is to start with a really small drill bit, right? Uh, you start with that pilot hole, small drill bit, always have oil. Don't apply pressure. If you apply pressure, it's going to snap. You only apply pressure once you have a good pilot hole and you have a pretty d decent sized drill bit. So you do that and then it's just, you know, it's still slow, but it's a lot easier, a lot less strain, a lot less worry. And you see the, the pulley slides in there and it spins. Of course, this isn't really realistic. There's no bearing on there right now, but it spins. And that just helped me see like, okay, this actually can work. So I, that's the bearing there. You see, I was fitting the um, that, that bearing part in there. And that bearing part has to be welded to the pulley because... I had to do a little bit of, you know, zigzag modifications here. And, um, yeah, you just see I put that bearing inside of its housing. And then I want that housing to the bottom of the reactor. And I will let you guys know that housing is actually a mixture of aluminum and zinc and alloy. And I don't know if it was luck. I don't know of what. But I somehow welded an alloy of aluminum and zinc to a steel reactor a carbon steel reactor i don't know how the hell i did it but i did it okay now it came back to haunt me in the end and we'll get there but i did it in the moment and it worked so next i i had to think about a way how i could have some type of blade system in here right because if i fixed blades to the shaft that would be really hard to get in and out so i thought about a removable kind of stem that, that screws into the shaft and this will have the blades on it so you see there's a hollow pipe that the shaft can fit inside of and i drilled um two holes where screws can go on on either side and what they're going to do is as they screw in they're going to hold it in place like push it up against the shaft so it will it should when to you know fully tighten all spin in unison as one piece so that's the idea, and it works pretty well, as you see. Spinning as one piece, you know, I'm, I'm spinning the pulley, and then that uh, that place, that thing is spinning. Now, I know lubricant is also an issue. Now, here's the issue with lubricant. If I put any lubricant in the reactor, it's going to degrade. So here's the stand of the reactor, right? Um, and I had to build a stand because, you know, motors move, and they, they, they fling stuff all over the place. They fling themselves all over the place. So I had to put this the stand system in here. And I want to let you guys know, there is an absolute ton of footage I am not including because I didn't film it because I was so upset and irritated. Because, you know, think about it. They designed this washer motor 
this washer pulley, this shaft, all of this, they were precisely tuned to fit a washer, a specific washer on top of that. And I'm trying to be a smart aleck and turn these very specific things that were destined for their purpose into working with my own reactor, right? So I have to basically space them exactly how they were made in the, in, in the washer. I have to fit them up perfectly. And if I don't, it's not going to work. So it took so long to get them at the perfect spacing. It was an absolute disaster. But I got it working. That's all that matters. So now you see these are the blades. I welded them onto the tube. And I put them in there. And, uh, you know, it, it works. It spins. And you can actually see my imperfections, my humanly imperfections, because it's not spinning straight, because there's a little bit of curves in the shaft when I had to reweld it. Hey, I'm a human. There's no way I was going to make that straight, okay? But the point is, it works. And the good thing is, I can always go on later in my life and, and, and you'll know, change things up, replace things. The dang truck going by messing up my recording. But you see, it works. And. I actually, you know, got a little bit ambitious, got a little bit cocky. I wanted to put some some plastics in there for the first time and be like, you know what? Let's see how it works. And, uh, yeah, I think that's where I messed up because I wanted this to be you know, a realistic application of the blades. Put my plastic in there, turned it on, and it stalled for a little bit. It wasn't going, and then the bearing broke. <laughs> the bearing literally fell apart. Like, um, the part that's pressed on just decided to fall off so i gotta get some bearing mounts or or thread locker put that back on hopefully it works if it doesn't might have to weld it but you know that's as far as we've come and i know it may not seem like that big of a change but trust me this thing took the whole two weeks that i was gone to make this especially the motor system i've never worked on something so difficult before in my life for this reactor with it, you know that motor was something else it was a demon so much so I didn't even bother to record the stuff because I just was like, man, I don't even know if, I, if this will work in the end. But, you know, we made it. And, but we still don't really know. You know, it might not be airtight or whatever. It might have leaks. And then we got to completely, you know, do something different. But we're going to get there. And I do have a break from work. So hopefully I can get another video out soon showing it work. You know, the whole reactor work with the side, the side magnetron in combination with the agitator. And, you know, we're going to see. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for being patient. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Hopefully it's soon.